From the Quran, we're in the section uh, Ibrahim, okay, and starts with A L R, which is I think Alif Lam Ra. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Okay. A book which we have revealed unto thee, in order that thou mightest lead mankind out of the depths of darkness into light, by the leave of their Lord to the way of Him, the exalted in power, worthy of all praise, of Allah to whom do belong all things in the heavens and on earth. But alas, for the unbelievers, for a terrible penalty their unfaith will bring them. Those who love the life of this world more than the hereafter, who hinder men from the path of Allah and seek therein something crooked, they are astray by a long distance. We sent not an apostle except to teach in the language of his own people, in order to make things clear to them. Now Allah leaves straying those whom he pleases and guides whom, guides whom he pleases, and he is exalted in power, full of wisdom. We sent Moses with our signs and the command, Bring out thy people from the depth of darkness into light, and teach them to remember the days of Allah. Verily, in this there are signs for which such as are firmly patient and constant, grateful and appreciative. Firmly patient and constant, never giving up, never quitting, never just relentless perseverance. Grateful and appreciative. It's important. Remember, Moses said to his people, Call to mind the favor of Allah to you when he delivered you from the people of Pharaoh. They set you hard tasks and punishments, slaughtered your sons, and let your women folk live. Therein was a tremendous trial from your Lord. And remember, your Lord caused to, to be declared publicly, If ye are grateful, I will add more favors unto you. But if ye show ingratitude, truly my punishment is terrible indeed. And Moses said, If ye show ingratitude, ye and all, all on earth together, yet is Allah free of all wants, worthy of all praise. He has not, ha, no, sorry, <laughs> has not the story reached you, O people, or those who went before you, of the people of Noah and Ad and Thambud, and those who came after them? No one knows them but Allah. To them came apostles with clear signs, but they put their hands up their mouths and said, we do deny the mission on which ye have been sent, and we are really in suspicious disquieting doubt as to that to which ye invite us. Their apostle said, Is there a doubt about Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth? Is it he who invites you in order that he may forgive you your sins and give you respite for a term appointed? They said, Ah, ye are no more than human like ourselves. Ye wish to turn us away from the gods of our fathers used to worship. Then bring us some clear authority. There's this constant stories of like people wanting more and more proof. And remember like in the in the past uh, parts in the beginning, like that's just, that's not a good way to say it. I can't remember which part it was in, but I know it's come up more than once, right? Of this people asking for proof and that even if they sent an angel, they'd be like, This is suspicious or this is something that mean. like they would never be satisfied even if you gave them evidence. That's funny. Because it's really true to human psychology. It really is. Their apostles said to them, True, we are human like yourselves, but Allah doth grant his grace to such of his servants as he pleases. It is not for us to bring you an authority except as Allah permits. And on Allah let all men of faith put their trust. No reason have we why we should not put our trust in Allah. Indeed, he has guided us to the ways we follow. We shall certainly bear with patience all the hurt you may cause us. For those who put their trust should put their trust in Allah. And the believers said to their apostles, Be sure we shall drive you out of our land, or ye shall return to our religion. But their Lord inspired this message to them. Verily, we shall cause the wrongdoers to perish. And verily, we shall cause you to abide in the land and succeed them. This for such as fear the time when they shall stand before my tribunal, such as fear the punishment and denounce. But they sought victory and decision, there and then, and frustration was the lot of every powerful obstinate transgressor. In front of such a one is held, and he is given for drink boiling fetid water. In gulps will he sip it. Wait a minute, what? 
in front of such a one is hell and he is given for drink he is given for drink boiling fetid water as someone who like has burned their tongue countless times on tea that sounds awful in gulps will he sip it I, yo it would hurt so bad oh man oh that's terrible but now will he be near swallowing it down his throat death will come to him from every quarter yet he will not die and in front of him will be a chastisement unrelenting the parable of those who reject their lord is that their works are as ashes on which the wind blows fiercely on a tempestuous day no power have they over aught that they have earned that is straying far far from the goal ah that's a potent one right there ibrahim 18 that's potent potent okay 19 seest thou not that allah created the heavens and the earth in truth if he so will he can remove you and put in your place a new creation <laughs> i like this one a lot i heard this in some lectures from mufti mek like and i've heard this come up a lot about getting replaced like that is so awesome to like burst the bubble of people's egos like i'm so special you know me I'm, I'm just you know the bee's knees and this is like you can be replaced <laughs> oh my gosh i love it nor is that for allah any great matter oh snap they will all be marshaled before allah together then will the weak say to those who were arrogant for us we but followed you can ye then avail us at all against the wrath of allah they will reply, if we had received the guidance of Allah, we should have given it to you. To us it makes no difference. Now, whether we rage or bear these torments with patience, for ourselves there is no way of escape. And Satan will say when the matter is decided, it was Allah who gave you a promise of truth. I too promised, but I failed in my promise to you. Interesting, yes. So, Satan is going to admit he can't keep his promises. So people shouldn't sell their souls for fake promises. I had no authority over you except to call you, but ye listen to me. Then reproach not me. Wait a minute. I had no authority over you except to call you. This, okay, this may sound kind of weird, but this is like, at work, a good example is like, I'll have another person who they've been there longer than me and they kind of are telling me in a rude way to do something. And sometimes I've said to them like, you're not the manager. I don't have to listen to you. And what you're telling me is not what I've been told. So I'm just going to do what I have to do. Right. And it's thing, it's interesting because Satan's saying right, so he's saying right now, like, all I can do is, you know, talk to you. I don't really have authority over you. It's just like empty words, just chit chat, chit chat, right? And he's like, but ye listen to me. It's like, well, I called and you came, but I don't have any authority over you, but you came when I called. Then reproach not me. Like, even Satan's is like, well, don't blame me because you answered the call. It's your own fault. But reproach your own souls. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Reproach your own souls. I cannot listen to your cries. Whoa, wait a minute. So Satan is saying right now, I cannot listen to your cries. Because if you think about it, Satan causes the evil. He enjoys the cries is what I would say. Is like that entity, that energy, that chaotic, dark, dark art energy enjoys the cries because that's all it does is create suffering, right? Of course. It's like he's not going to listen and feel pity. It's like, no, he's going to be, you know, you're deaf, deaf to your suffering because he's the king of suffering. I cannot listen to your cries, nor can ye listen to mine. I reject your former actions associating with me, with Allah. For wrongdoers, there must be grievous penalty. But those who believe and work righteousness will be admitted to gardens beneath which rivers flow, to dwell therein for a with the leave of their Lord. Their greeting therein will be peace. Seest thou not how Allah sets forth a parable, a good, a goodly word like a goodly tree, <clears throat> whose root 
no, whose root is firmly fixed, and his branches reach the heavens. Wow. Smell. That's crazy. It brings forth its fruit at all times by the leave of its Lord. So Allah sets forth parables for men in order that they may receive admonition. And the parable of an evil word is that of an evil tree. It is torn up by the root from the surface of the earth. It has no stability. Thinks why it's important to read like different texts, you know, the parables of an evil world word. It's like when you read something, you can deconstruct it and see if it's not going to hold water, right? But if you never encounter it and never read it, how are you going to be able to know how to tear it down and what's true and what's not, right? Allah will establish in strength those who believe with the word that stands firm in this world and in the head after. But Allah will leave to stray those who do wrong. Allah doeth what he willeth. Has, hast thou not turned thy vision to those who have changed the favor of Allah? Changed the favor of Allah. Like, he's turned to them now as like approving and like has taken him under his, his wing. Hmm. Change into blasphemy and cause their people to descend to the house of perdition. Oh, I mean, oh, I get it. It's the negative version, right? So seeing who God has like cast aside. It's, that's how I'm seeing it. Into hell they will burn therein, an evil place to stay in. And they set up idols as equal to Allah to mislead men from the path. Say, enjoy your brief power, but verily ye are making straightway for hell. Speak to my servants who have believed that they may establish regular prayers and spend in charity out of the sustenance we have given them secretly and openly before the coming of a day in which there will be neither mutual bargaining nor befriending. It is Allah who hath created the heavens and the earth, and sendeth down rain from the skies, and with it bringeth out fruits wherewith to feed you. It is he who hath made the ships subject to you, that they may sail through the sea by his command. Oh, that reminds me of Poseidon, like the Greeks and the Romans used to pray to Poseidon. Neptune, is it Neptune, the Roman name? Sailed by the seas by his command, and the rivers also hath he made subject to you. As some, as like, even when I go on the ferry, I'm like still super nervous, like, please don't let anything happen to this stupid boat so that, you know, the Titanic situation doesn't happen. The sea is a perilous calypso, as they say. And he hath made subject to you the sun and the moon, both diligently pursuing their course. And the night and the day hath he also made subject to you. I think what he means by subject to you, as in like, to your benefit, because I can't control the sun, right? But the sun is like, the position of which it is, is ideal for the earth's overall health, at least at this point in time, right? And the moon as well regulates the cycles ladies i don't you know i don't know about men right but sometimes you know this might be an old school thought but when you look at the moon and then like you get your period you know it's like your menstruation it's like a cycle it's like a way of tracking and you know some women can cycle up with the moon and you know brings your your period and then if you don't have a doctor you can figure out when you're ovulating and the cycle of the moon and you can conceive a child. Uh, it's like an old school like grandma saying, but I have noticed it. Okay, 34. And he giveth you of all that ye ask for, but if ye count the favors of Allah, never will ye be able to number them. Oh, somebody put that in the comments section one time on one of my Grateful Friday videos. Ah, okay, it's right here. Verily man is given up to injustice and ingratitude. Yeah, we all gotta... Try to remember what we're thankful for. Remember Abraham said, O oh my Lord, make this city one of peace and security and preserve me and my sons from worshiping idols. You know, I used to think that, like my uncle like would always say like, this is an idol, this is an idol, like to a little, like, like a, something that was like physical, right? And I have little statues, but that's just like busts. That's just, 
a nerdy like figurine right it's not you're not worshiping it. it's just a piece of art but i think people get too confused about idols like in the old school days it's like that golden calf right but i think now the idols of today in our time period are not physical like things they are well they're people who are physical but it's not inanimate objects at least in some cases uh Hindus and, and might have their statuaries, you know, of Vishnu and, and stuff like that, and Ganesh, uh, that they may think represent the spirit, but that's besides the point. What I'm saying is I think the idols today are certain, you know, music stars or uh, celebs who don't really do much for humanity, who haven't really earned their, you know, right to be famous. I think today... When I like what I get from this is like when Abraham's like, "Hey, I don't want my sons to worship idols." I would tell my my, my future children, right, my grandchildren, I'd be like, "Hey, don't worship, you know, said singer as she's some type of goddess, you know, like, no, you need to, you can appreciate and value, but not worship, and you had to be careful, right? So, I I can feel what Abraham is saying, you know, thirty six. O oh my Lord, they have indeed led astray many among mankind. He then who follows my ways is of me, and he has that obeys me. But thou art indeed oft forgiving, most merciful. I like that, like, I've been noticing, you know, that's just like a re repeated thing. It's like, oh, it's just like so cyclical, you know, like it just comes back again. And then it, we learn and we learn and we come back again to that premise. And it's, the repetitive pattern is nice. It really helps for memorization. I think I've said that a lot, but I'm going to say it every time I see that, <laughs> those words. Okay, family, we'll cut it off here because this, you know, computer has been freezing left and right. And the Apple people don't really tell me what's causing it. So I'll cut it off here. That way I don't got to restart again. Because if it freezes, it erases everything I previously recorded. Which is like, what? Why has no one fixed that? Whatever. But all right, family.